man. Talk, talking about you know, tearing down houses, uh, Bill Belichick and Mac Jones are easily doing that in New England. I don't care if they walked away with an, a win against a division rival. Uh, Mac Jones is garbage. He'll continue to be garbage. But how the hell, if you're the Bills, do you let that go? What was, what was so garbage? Did you watch the game? What was so garbage about Mac Jones? Uh, I mean, uh, just up until this the spot. point, like Mac Jones has played well in this game. He looked like a Mac very Jones was competent 25 for 30. quarterback in this game. He this 25 for 30. The best game Mac Jones has ever played. He had a pretty good week one, even though they lost. But even a blind squirrel gets it right twice a day. All right. No, you're probably right. Mac Jones sucks. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to play <laughs> Mac Jones advocate for there for a second, but that's not. I mean, fun. Don't get me wrong. Never... I, I, like he, he's able to win games against good teams. He's been able to stay as a starting quarterback in this league for at least this long, regardless of if it's the Patriots or not, with a senile GM slash head coach. Um, but like, let's let's not get it wrong either. Just because you're competent doesn't mean you should be starting quarterback. Mitch Trubisky is competent. He's not a starting quarterback. You think Mac or Mitch Trubisky is worth backup? I mean, he's he's been a backup. Oh, I, listen, come, there are a lot. Well, I mean, there I are a lot of backups. That. There's a lot of backups. I, I think Mac Jones is probably like backup quarterback at best. Like he probably, yeah, he doesn't really deserve to be starting. I think he could be a very. But he could, good he could he could come in for, you know, he could come in for an injured quarterback like partway through the season. Like you would hate it if it was like week one and your starting quarterback went down, exactly. and now you're stuck with Mac Jones. But I think you'd hate it mean Aaron at any point in the year. Uh, yeah, I would. I would not, not when you got Chad him. Henney, bro. You would. You'd actually like, like you want a but little Mac Jones bit of specifically, a mix up. though. You want a little bit of a mix up, you know, like people been got too much film on uh, Patrick Mahomes so we want to see Chad Henney for a few games you know twist twist your ankle Pat and like sit out for a little bit no get, no get, that's not get, what I want get extra better you know <laughs> give him give Chad Henney give Chad Henney the first first playoff game Mac Jones is not winning a playoff game I, I, I said same, if you put him in the same scenario as Chad Henney was against the Browns we lose by 40 he had Tyreek Hill. Mac Jones wouldn't be able to get it. Him and his limp noodle arm would not be able to get it to Tyreek. He could throw that out route, dude. He could throw. He could throw <laughs> that fourth down out route to Tyreek Hill. I swear to God, <laughs> it's not happening. What he's any not scenario. doing. What he's not doing is that like third and sixteen or whatever that Ch- Chad Henney got down to within one yard. He's not doing that. Because only anything is possible, not Mac Jones. Just, that doesn't work. Listen, we've been talking. We've been talking about frauds, and I, I'm I'm taking a look at this too. I think we've got a lot of trying frauds. to say that Chad Henney is a fraud. No, no, no. I'm I'm thinking we've got a lot of fraudulent teams at the top here. You mean the yeah, Chiefs right. are the only good team in the league? I think the Chiefs. No, I won't say the Chiefs are the only good team. I, I would. It's I us, would go it's as, us and the Eagles. I would go as far to say, obviously. We're an upper echelon, right? We're that top tier. I think there's a tier right underneath of us where this team fits in. You guys are going to completely disagree, but I think the Jaguars are one of the better teams in the AFC. God, dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah, Tell me, Jaguars, we, listen, we talked about the Bills, or we. everybody has talked about the Dolphins being frauds and that they haven't beat a team who – has even a 500 record. And then we just talked about off air, the 49ers being fraud because they haven't done this. They've done the same thing. They haven't beaten a team that's 500 except for the Cowboys. And we don't consider them to be good. The bills also haven't beat a team with a 500 or winning record. They lost to the jets. They beat the Raiders. They beat the commanders. They did beat the dolphins, but again, fraudulent. They lost to the Jaguars. They almost lost to the ja- Giants, and then they just lost to the Patriots. So they have one win, much like the 49ers. So you think the you think the Giants against, are one of the better teams in the NFC right now? In the NFC, no, I think they're I think they're hot garbage. They beat them, and they barely beat them, and they don't have a winning record. 
The only team that the Bills have beaten who have a winning record are the Dolphins who don't have a win against a team who's even close to 500. See, I, I would go ahead and put the Bills in the category. A win is a win in the NFL. There's a, let me just, like, a win, in the, a win is a win in the NFL. Shut up, Sean. The Bills are in the category of window missed. Means that their window with this iteration of the players on their team will not be able to win them a Super Bowl. Kind of like the Bengals right now. I don't know if they're going to win a playoff game. They don't look good. The Bills, I'm calling the Bills, the Niners, the Dolphins, frauds. Jacksonville, okay. underneath. I, I would say it's the Chiefs. I hey, probably how many go teams Ravens, are there in the NFL? Right and I go ja- Jacksonville. Shut up. 32. There's 32 teams in the NFL. 13 of them currently have winning records, which is less than half. Frauds, so of get them. off this whole thing about like they've only beaten teams with losing records. There's a, a majority of the teams in the NFL right now have losing records. Means they're all frauds, except for us. No frauds. I want to talk about true frauds. Okay, a team that outside looking in seems really good, but is not built to win a Super Bowl. It's the same system that the Chiefs have already beat. It's just a different quarterback at the helm. The Forty ers They lose again. Ha, 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 ha. Brock Purdy <laughs> is not a Super Bowl winning quarterback, regardless of the talent you surround him with. There's a, a stat that seems pretty like it doesn't it doesn't sound too uh impactful. Like it doesn't it doesn't sound like this would make them a bad team. Like they are oh in thirty something. Uh when trailing by eight or more points in the fourth quarter, meaning they, when they're put in situations where their quarterback has to throw the ball and they have to push the ball down the field, the 49ers are not getting it done. Yeah, okay, like they aren't great from playing from behind, but Super Bowl winning teams sometimes have to get put in that situation. Our first Super Bowl year, we had to make three straight comebacks to win a Super Bowl. So the 49ers, as great as their roster looks, the Kyle Shanahan system, philosophy, whatever it may be, having a game-managing quarterback, Brock Purdy's not going to get you to the goal that the 49ers should have as an organization right now. Frauds. We can't disagree with that. They've got a lot of great – skilled players if they had a good quarterback they've got one of the best defenses as well they had a great uh, even a decent quarterback one who could actually make decisions i think they could potentially be a lock in for winning the super bowl but yeah not with not with who they've got at the helm not a frauds it's a lot of frauds in the nfl there's not a lot of frauds. It's just too I'll, many. Ones. I'll tell you a team that I've been saying from week one aren't frauds, even though they haven't been playing that well. The Eagles. Do tell more. It's going to be a repeat in the Super Bowl, man. There are two teams out here right now that are ahead of of the rest of the pack. I believe it is us and the Eagles. Everybody, while they were undefeated, everybody was talking about the 49ers and the Eagles. Well, now we've seen teams. Face adversity, we've seen who bounced back and we see who didn't. Yeah, I can't disagree. Uh, the Eagles look really strong. It's, it's a bad loss to the Jets, um, but overall, they have yet to play. Uh, I guess they, they played a complete game against the Dolphins. It's the first complete game I've seen from them. First yeah. half was a little rocky. Uh, they came out the second half and were absolutely dominant. If they can pick it up by the end of the season i mean maybe they're kind of like the chiefs where they play down to the level of their competition um but if they start putting some games together offensively uh full four quarters they they still look just as good as they did last year if not a little bit better and they just brought in uh kevin byard 
from Tennessee for absolutely nothing. He gets to return to his hometown team. That defense looks even scarier than it did at the beginning of the season, believe it or not. How do they keep getting all these players from the Titans so easily? I mean, that's a that's a that's another <laughs> weird it's their, situation. It's their pipeline. Like, <laughs> it's like us us to the Colts or us to the Browns. <laughs> that's just like that's another weird situation going on. They they didn't play this weekend, but they're now putting everybody up on the trading block. Uh the there's rumors that the Chiefs are the Chiefs are always going to be in for a player, but there's rumors in that that the Chiefs are going to be in for Traylon Burks, a kid who's in his second year in the season, and they're talking about moving off of him. They're they're talking about uh, moving. Any player is up for sale. Any and all players. Derrick Henry has been. He's actually one of the players who hasn't been linked to the Kansas City Chiefs. But there's two AFC teams and one NFC team who have apparently called to see what the asking price for Derrick Henry is. Like they have got every player up for sale and ready to go. It is a it is looking bad in Tennessee. Exciting times in Tennessee. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> It's looking bad for them. Feel bad for Mike Vrabel. Why? Maybe, maybe, maybe they, they have like a maybe they have a grand the scheme. Rebuild. He's a good coach. I think he's stuck with a bad GM. That may be true, but he will be around for the rebuild. That's why they're trading on the players right now. They could, it could the be that. Well, you, be what if they fuck it up so bad that he wants to go somewhere else? That, that's the other thing. And he could. <laughs> he could, man. If somebody he else go comes, wherever he wants, calling that guy. That guy knows what he's doing as a coach. He's he's dragged. Ryan Tannehill to the AFC championship game against the Kansas City Chiefs. With the with the right players, I I'm taking his his scheme over Mike McDaniels and Kyle Shannon. And that seems to be like the popular shit right now. I think it has more to I, I think it has more to do with his actual coaching ability than it has to do with whatever scheme he's running. Like you see him go on, and and you guys know me. I don't. I'm not like big with uh, a bar stool, but he goes on busting with the boys, and I just listen to a couple clips. Like he is an ultimate player coach. He knows his guys. He can joke around with them, but he's also been one of the elite of the elite players in the league, and he knows how the mentality needs to work, and how he needs to push some buttons. He can go anywhere, and be a fantastic coach and if you actually give him yeah but he knows he knows what he's doing as far as oh for sure play calling on both sides of the ball i'm i mean all all head coaches lean um and kind of mold to their offensive coordinators in in one way or another but like mike Vrabel knows what the fuck he's doing like he's not just a motivator or a player's coach like he's a good he's a he's a all around he has He's he's got he's got a scheme that, like you said, got fucking Ryan Tannehill to, to the AFC Championship or playoffs against us. Bring him back to KC. Here after was- Andy, I mean, yeah, not yeah, now. Obviously, obviously <laughs> after Andy, but like it, it it also lends credence to Andy has is getting older. He has been talking a little bit more each and every season about moving away from the game. It's possible that Andy Reid retires after this season should the Chiefs win another Super Bowl. I think it'd be highly likely that that that, that happens. And we now no longer have a successor to be the head coach. It was Matt Nagy at one point who it wasn't really ever Matt Nagy. He was expected to move away, but then it was expected to potentially be Eric Bieniemy and then Kafka, who both now left. I, I don't think Matt Nagy is going to be the successor to that. I think he'll get a, a head coaching job. God, before I, that hope not. I, I don't really want him to be our head coach anyways. Uh, and it's definitely not going to be Spags. At least I would hope not. I think. Has he had a, a head coaching job before? Yep. Spags? Is yeah. that what you're asking? Spags? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, New York Giants, Michael Strahan, Super Bowl, two of them. He wasn't. Head he coach was there, D.C. Was he? Yeah, he was. He was. Was he the, the DC? Rams. Oh, he was. Sorry, yeah, he was the DC. Yeah, yeah no, he doesn't he have. He's not a Super Bowl winning head coach. No, he's he was the I, seamless I, Rams I head coach for a while. I don't know if he's got. I, excusing that, because I thought he was the head coach. Uh, Fine, I don't believe that he has a winning season as a head coach. Does he? 
I really don't think so, man. He was with the Rams. The Jalen to St. Louis. So. That wasn't the only head coaching gig that he had. This is his most recent. What did, he, what did he come in after fucking Jeff Fisher? <laughs> so. Shocker. Really? I'm not looking it up. You guys can have fun with that. Fine. Oh gosh, don't you worry. <laughs> but okay, so if 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 Rabel comes to Kansas City, you think we would actually see Patrick Mahomes uh hand the That ball was his off, only uh, from, head coaching under center. Was St. Louis from 09 to 11. He's not been a head coach since so I thought he had. Okay. Oh, he's an interim head so that coach was before in New York at Fisher. Uh from 09 to 2011. So, yes. Right. Looking up Jeff Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. Uh, he was the head coach for the St. Louis, then Los Angeles Rams from 12 to 16. So he immediately replaced Steve Spagnolo. You're welcome. Why are we talking about shit head coaches? I don't know. Well, not only not only are the Tennessee Titans having a fire sale, uh, much like the Broncos seem to be doing uh, mm. or sound like they're doing. Uh, mm-hmm. But Ryan Tannehill is also injured, mm. and they're talking about playing both Malik Willis and Will Levis. And when you have two quarterbacks, you You're don't have one. a quarterback. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> the Cardinals tried that, dude, and it fucking sucked. <laughs> You guys remember the two quarterback experiment? Who was it? Was it no, Rosen? No, because it failed so bad. Yeah. Oh know. man. Oh, hold on. I will Google that. Uh, keep going. <laughs> what? <laughs> when? I'm not gonna be able to find it right away. But... When was this? I don't even. The two quarterback has never worked in the NFL. It doesn't matter where you go. It's never. It didn't work last year in in New England with Bailey Zappi and and Mac Jones. That's why they cut Zappy and then brought him back and then cut him and then brought him back. They did wave Malik Cunningham. Did they really? Yeah. So they're Bill going Belichick all in is for... Bill Belichick is totally getting fired after this season. Like Bill it's Belichick not even, just signed an offseason extension. It doesn't it doesn't matter. He's it, not I know a lot of, I know a lot of people have talked about that over the last few weeks. Uh, Bill Belichick it just signed came an out extension. this past weekend. Yeah, it did. But it doesn't matter uh because the contracts for GMs slash or and or head coaches are totally irrelevant. They can be fired at any given time. Uh, it does not count against the salary cap. And it was also reported that um, while he did sign an extension in the off season, Bill Belichick, that he would be reporting to Bob Kraft at the end of every single year. And they would be deciding on whether he should stay or not. So even though he's got the extension, that's mostly just for in case somebody else wanted to have him as a head coach. And maybe the the Patriots didn't necessarily want him to coach for them, but they could have contractual rights, much like with Sean Payton. Saints got a first round pick plus for Sean Payton to go to the Denver Broncos. That could be something that the New England Patriots could be looking for. They're honestly trying to do it to force him to retire. They will not fire him. Like, listen, Bill. Oh, yeah. Okay. You retire, okay, okay. you go out or nothing. Yes, Tybo. The the twilight years of Kurt Warner in Arizona. I'm pretty sure they did a Kurt Warner, Matt Liner, two quarterback system. Or at least tried. You're pretty sure, but you just looked this up and then came in with some real enthusiasm, but don't really have any real answers. What? Real answer for what? I mean, I guess the, you could say the Colts kind of tried it too with Phillip Rivers and Jacoby Brissett. They never had a real yeah, 2000, 2006, 2007. Matt Leiter, tried it. hot garbage in the NFL. Right. Hot it didn't garbage. work because Matt Leiter was trash. <laughs> <laughs> and Kurt Warner was old. When you got two quarterbacks, you got none. <laughs> well, what happens when you have multiple running backs, but then you sit one out and he wasn't on the injury list? He 
the Atlanta Falcons, B. John Robinson, ended up with oh, 0.3 yeah. fantasy points this past week. He was in for yeah, just a couple of plays. In their dynasty league. And then was pulled out of the game. It, uh, he he said in, I don't know if it was post game or, or maybe it was Monday's press conferences that he had a headache. I'm assuming he meant migraine, and that's what kept him out of the game. I also suffer from migraine, so if that's the case, I get it. Uh, but the NFL is investigating the Atlanta Falcons for potentially knowing this information and not putting him on the required injury list uh, in with, with their d- own due diligence in proper timing. That's completely understandable, but if it's like a migraine just pops up, game day stuff like that he's gonna try oh, to play sure. yeah it, if it, like yeah stuff. if it like, pops no, up that's completely fine but the the question the question the nfl is asking is how long prior to the game did they know because you still have up until i believe it's two hours prior to the game in which you are supposed to designate players uh and then after the two hours then it's considered game time decision which isn't a problem. But if they knew about it prior to the two hours before kickoff, then they can be fined for not disclosing information. I don't think the Arthur Smith is smart enough to figure all that out. Honestly, he just has a very (laughs) dumb face to me. He doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. (laughs) He just has a dumb face. Yeah. Jeez, dude. What's his face? Search We're trying our, to get sponsored by his brother out here. I don't care, man. His brother knows he has a dumb face, too. Jeez! Look at his mustache he's sporting right now, man. That is not a not a good look for this man. He should not be the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. That's messed up, dude. I'm not calling for his job or anything. I'm just saying it should be somebody else. Kind of you literally just called for his job. You said he shouldn't be the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not going to say it, but if I was <laughs> going to say it, I would say that man needs to be gone. I didn't say it. I was going to say it, though. You should say it. Say it with your chest. Say it with chest. No, if I was going to say it, I would say Arthur Smith is a terrible, Arthur, terrible coach. Arthur Smith. Who should never be coaching in the NFL again. But yet, I'm not saying it. Wow. 